Well, hello all of you fingerstyle comrades out there. This is Patrick back with another video, and it's time for Fingerstyle Album of the Month, episode number two. And in this episode, I want to talk about uh, an album I bought 20 years ago that really inspired me and still inspires me to this day. And that album is Richard Leo Johnson's Fingertip Ship. Now, a lot of you guys might have never even heard of this guy, and that's and there's a reason why. It's because he made a small blip on the radar and very quickly after he made a few albums kind of disappeared from the music industry. Um, as far as I can tell, he's a photographer these days, or always has been, I think. I think music was something he just did because he loved it and for the fun of it, but this particular album is uh, on the Blue Note, was on the Blue Note label, or Metro Blue, uh, kind of a merging major label type of thing. Uh, you can see kind of his picture there on the back, Anyway, he uh, looks like a cool dude with a double neck, 12 string and 6 string, string guitar, double neck. He plays this thing. And uh, this album is just completely insane. And uh, in future episodes, in, in, in future videos, I want to try to um, include some of the music and, and you know give a review of it so I can give listeners the more you know, advanced version, more advanced review of this, you know, but, you know, the copyright thing is still an issue. So um, I'm going to have to figure that out first. But I just want to talk about this this album just for the next minute or so. Um, there's some insane stuff going on in this album. Uh, he's one of the most ferocious 12-string players I've ever heard. It was like hearing Michael Hedges for the very first time, only in a different, more avant-garde sort of way. And this, this, this kind of stuff that he's doing on here, he's... From what I heard, now I never saw the guy live, so I only had to go off of what other people told me of this of this dude. But evidently, he was he was <laughs> into some really insane stuff, like putting a pencil between the strings and yanking it out and tapping on all, all over the place. Uh, there's I think there's maybe one or two videos on YouTube that's like still posted, like old footage from the '90s that he played in a coffee house somewhere. Uh, yeah, this. Uh, all 13 tracks just have something to offer and it, it, he, he does this thing where he, he's mo mostly a 12 string player, he does some 6 string stuff but he does this really avant-garde technique where he's like t tapping I think uh, oh yes, number track number 12 Prometheus meets the digital age and at the end of this song he goes into this weird tapping thing to where it almost sounds like it's digital Except it, it's on an acoustic. He doesn't use any effects. It's all acoustic. And he, it's, you get, almost get the vibe like, you know, he's trying to make it sound like it's digital and he's pulling it off. Actually doing an exceptional, brilliant job of making that particular part of the song sound like it's coming from a synth. Or, but he's just doing it all acoustic. And it, it's just ingenious. Uh, this album is one of the most brilliant albums ever made, I think, in my opinion. Just And... Uh, it's there's some good melodies on here too, but uh, just if you want, if you're that kind of fan that likes over the top uh, finger style guitar playing, then this album you really can't get much better than this album. And uh, like I said, the guy's no longer touring, or I don't even know if he's making records anymore, or, or how much he is in, still involved in music. But I know he kind of quit the music business years ago. I guess he just didn't. He got fed up with the touring or the promotion or didn't like the record company stuff. And that's totally fine. I get that. There's just, there's people who are signed to a label um, and then for have a few years of success and then they disappear because they just can't stand the music business. And I don't blame them. Uh, who can really blame them for doing that? So I've been tempted to do that for, you know, several times. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like that with some people. But I just wanted to take a few minutes to say, uh, just rave about this album, incredible album. And uh, there's other stuff like here, like Get Funked, Bluefield, Cicada, The Filing Song, Jocko Morocco. You can only imagine what that might sound like. Synthetic Blues, uh, Mother's Day, Glide Path, Hearts of Palm is like the opening. So, uh, like I said, this is like another Hedges experience for me. It just blew my mind. And unfortunately, uh, most people, most people in the even in the fingerstyle community, will never hear of this guy. But I'm telling you, 
if you can still get this album anywhere on the internet, pick it up, go get it. <laughs> so it, it's it's a treasure, it really is. So that's it for today. I hate, I hate to quit saying that after videos, that's it. You know, like, what, what did you come up with something different once in a while? I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. So that's it for today. We'll see you next time.